Okay, well, this is the game Stephanie Rierick came up with, I guess, probably all of it, really. We'll have to get this done next here. But I'm going to show you this in a moment or two. These are some other of the forms that come when you go to the link and you download the file into your computer and print them out. You get a number of things that need to be cut out. And here's another one. I didn't use this because of the backing I used on the cards that I did make right here. This turns into these, you see. They're cards and they can be used and they say various things that help move the game forward. This sheet of paper here is kind of important to me, and I didn't realize it had fallen, Stephanie. I apologize. But it is, in fact, the guide for this right here. So we're going to find it together now. I have to lay this carefully. This is the last piece of paper uh, in a project that I got off the Internet. I went to a particular set of, uh, 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 of links that I was uh, directed to uh, from Kim Hodge of the Michigan Alliance of Time Banks uh, that originated with one Stephanie Rierick, who the time bank world is very fortunate to have uh, in their midst because, you know, not only is she, well, Stephanie, but she's Stephanie Rierick. She actually has boys and girls, moms and dads, men and women, a following in the music world and we need to uh, respect that. <clears throat> I don't know, do you have a following? <laughs> so in any event, I'm gonna pick this piece up by going and it lifts right up because it's adhesive as opposed to subhesive uh, and I don't even know what that means. I'm gonna cut this exposed adhesiveness away now and try to describe to you what we have here. I started this project yesterday when I was at a local Big Lots store and at Big Lots I started looking for materials because I had told myself I was going to dedicate my day to figuring this game thing out that everybody keeps telling me about in the time bank community. It comes from Stephanie Rierick. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not going to... Oh, it's Dane County. Yeah, Dane... Dane? Is that the one that... Uh, there's another cool county in Wisconsin that sticks out into the water. Don't tell me that's you. Oh my goodness. In any event, I didn't realize that. <laughs> in any event, um, she's out there. She's a terrific time bank person. And if I'm not mistaken, she is the person in charge of the time bank. Uh, I'm going to take a leap of faith and say Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, in any event, it is in Wisconsin. It's in the time bank community. I think it's safe to say probably the most famous time bank. Uh, okay, um, in Portland, you guys, certainly, uh, you're famous. Um, out in Arizona, I've seen your, your stuff a couple times. And, you know, time banks are coming along. They're growing. In Michigan here, we need much more of it. That's why I'm doing this. Because I'm working on a project on Flint's east side. And I am meeting a really, uh, I want to say incredible, but I didn't want to overstate myself. But now I'm kind of committed to it. But, uh, well, they are incredible people. I mean, they are surviving. I tell you what, um, it's not easy. And to be honest, not everybody is surviving. So, time banking is important, and the concepts of uh, community, as put forward by uh, Peter Block, are important. Edgar Kahn's time bank, and I just wanted to share this with you now that I've just finished this up. What we have here, because I'm going to use this to make a little 
demonstration video uh, to a, a handful of people to whom this uh, could be important. This is the sheet upon which the board is based. I just finished putting this sheet on this cool thing. Listen, you can hear it. It's even got a kind of texture to it. And so it's cool. It's got, it's like more like a document almost of old. And here it is. And what you see here is what I tried to do here. Bingo, bango. And also what I've done is to take the cards that go with the game and cut them into their individual places. And uh, I'm going to try to see if I can't show myself how to play this game. And by getting it on the camera this way, we can kind of uh, learn together, perhaps. I don't really know what I'm doing, but let's see what happens. The cards. Roll cards. Let's see. Roll cards. Roll cards will go right here, apparently. Keep your roll card face down until you use that roll in an exchange. Each time you play a new roll card, introduce yourself. Say how you fit in with the community and the goals your teams have established. Turn it face up to show that it's been played. Don't forget, you lose points for each roll card not played. You will play in the character of the roll card you drew. As you draw additional roll cards, you may also play as those rolls when it suits you. So, roll cards must mean a kind of person here. We have asset cards and need cards. I don't suppose that's what we're looking for yet. Uh, this says your neighbor has your neighborhood has no and then there's kind of a blank space where a word goes. I don't think that's a roll card. This is a gift certificate. We'll learn about that later. And I see read this card aloud. I don't draw a roll card it says okay so that leaves these here these are roll cards there's quite a few of them and I'll read a few to you so you have a sense of what some of them are and the roles that you might end up playing these also have the backing on them I took the time to cut them out individually uh, when you first download the document into your computer and then print it out you will get a sort of sheet that's large with all of these on them and then you put them on the adhesive backing and cut them into pieces. I'll read them a few to you. Returning prisoner, firefighter, a barista. Oh, that's a person who makes coffee, I think, isn't it? Uh, this says, uh, very generous. Give your asset cards freely. Make people talk you into taking something in return. Hmm. This one simply says outgoing. This one says public speaker. Uh, this one says probation officer. You may not make matches with ex-prisoners or anyone on probation. So there's a restriction card in a sense there. Cafe owner. Uh, let's see, project coordinator. Uh, postal worker. Jack of all trades. Retired loner. These are a, a variety of, of the kind of roll cards that encourage us to be empathetic to those those roles when we play this game. So those are the roll cards. Let's see again what that said before. Keep your roll card face down until you use that roll in an exchange. Each time you play a new roll card, introduce yourself. Say how you fit in with the community and the goals your teams have established. Turn it face up to show that it's been played. Don't forget, you lose points for each roll card not played. So showing it up has mean it's been played. You will play in the character of the roll card you drew when you're talking. As you draw additional roll cards, you may also play those roles when it suits you. Okay, roll cards. The next are resource cards. 
Resource cards. Unless specified by instructions for a given activity, each resource card may be played as an asset or a need, depending on... Oh, that's what these are. Hold on. That must be these right here. Let me continue reading here. Unless specified by instructions for a given activity, each resource card may be played as an asset or a need depending on the situation and the role you're playing. To make a match or contribute an asset toward your goal, say the role you're in, outgoing. <laughs> say the role you're in, I'm outgoing! <laughs> and uh, how it relates to the asset or need you're using. Uh, expertise. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> I don't know if that's such a good one to start with, but hey. And lay it down on top of, as shown in figure one, tell the story of the match. Ha, huh, does it work towards your goal? If so, place the cards in the appropriate goal corner. A majority of your team must believe the match is plausible. <laughs> this is assumed unless someone makes a challenge. If a match is successfully challenged, the players take their resource cards back. Oh, the players take the cards back. Use them again, I guess. So, if this is a goal that needs to have uh, my uh, outgoing expertise to... Uh, be the uh, mascot for the high school football team, then my outgoing expertise about mascots would probably be where I'd want to put that. And I guess I could put my roll card there too. I don't know. We're kind of figuring this out. <laughs> Wild cards are the sky's the limit cards. That's what it says about wild cards right there. I don't understand that just yet. Barrier cards. When you draw a barrier card, follow the instructions on the card. Lay the card next to the board. Add points on tracker as instructed. Points on track. Barrier cards. Barrier. I think this is a barrier. Yeah, your neighborhood has no. So that would to me sound like a barrier, right? Okay. All right, here. Your neighborhood has no park. Play a round of what for. Ask, what do we need this for? This refers to the item at the top of the card. Oh, what do we need a park for? Four times or until you run out of answers, whichever comes first. These four needs are now the goals you're trying to meet. Write your answers in the goal corners on your game board. We'll have some blank cards for writing your goals on. Cards played toward each goal will be placed in those corners. Okay, so the barrier card, when you draw a barrier card, follow the instructions on the card. Lay the card next to the board. Add points on tracker as instructed. Your neighborhood has no park. Play a round of what for. Ask, what do we need a park for? Four times or until you run out of answers, whichever comes first. Answer, what do we need a park for? These four needs are now the goals you're trying to meet. Got it. Got it. By asking, what do we need a park for? Four times or until we just run out of answers, whichever comes first. We write those four needs. These needs are on the goal corners in your game board. Cards will be played toward. Okay, so you determine your goal by picking up a, a barrier card and answering what for. At least that's what this card says. Uh, okay, uh, they all say play what for. Okay, and some problems involve that your neighborhood has no school. Another says your neighborhood has no grocery store. Uh, this one says your neighborhood has no money. That's interesting. Uh, community center, soup kitchen, daycare, transportation. Your neighborhood has no transportation. These are all barriers. 
and as we play this game we will learn about new barriers that we can add to the list uh, to, to make the uh, game perhaps uh, uh, particular who knows who knows it's a it's a growing idea though and all and a lot of options need to always be in there but some can maybe that are being left out can be brought in that's what I'm trying to think of and finally goals cards these are to help you figure out what you can do to meet your needs even if your bigger goal is too much to handle with what you have right now when you play what for you're really reframing your goals to be more attainable with the resources you already have so when you ask what do we need a park for grocery store money or something you're asking yourselves what more basic needs would be being be, you're asking yourself what more basic needs would be met by that asset this helps us see if we might be able to meet those needs with what we have. Focus on meeting the goals you write on the board and disregard the original goal card drawn. As you add to it, your original goal card becomes outdated because you're, you're growing based on these needs here. Okay, now well, we're starting to get somewhere with this. I still think there are maybe some more instructions I need to find about actually moving around the board and that will come later but really what I'm doing right now is just showing you that we're this far this game is going to get played tomorrow in Michigan at the Michigan Alliance of Time Banks meeting and I wanted to share with you some of the excitement I'm feeling about making this into something that honestly I think uh, we can demonstrate how this board is made for example I haven't actually shown you too much of the board uh, but again it's it's based on Stephanie's concepts and again hers are right here and I just made my version of this and I believe that this can be an instructional tool that can help uh, get the conversation started and some examples made about how a time bank works. Again, if I give an hour of my time helping you, you pay me back when you help someone else. Includes that 47% of us that one of the presidential candidates referred to and that frankly neither of them understand that not everybody has money and not everybody is paying federal income tax but all of us have time at least while we're here and all of us have abilities and gifts that we can share with one another and we know all the problems can we start talking about the possibilities and this time bank game prototype that was authored by Stephanie Rerick and brought to this level by myself Tom uh, have had I've had a history in gameplay over the years in improvisation and there are only three things that any real game needs a who what and a where a who are the people uh, the role cards a what are the activities you do and a where are the places that you do those activities in and that tool has allowed me to reach a lot of people over the years and and help to understand that nobody teaches anybody anything. What we do provide, however, perhaps is an opportunity in which you can learn. And that's what this time bank game is going to be about. It's going to be a tool that we can all use to better understand that we think like fish in the water, that we're not in water because it's what we're accustomed to. We think only money can answer our problems when in fact the time we share with one another is what's important and we can share our time with one another but it begins by building community and knowing who the people are on the street you live and the kinds of needs each of you have and how all of us together can answer those needs and we don't need permission from anyone we the people can decide that we can help ourselves because there is no help certainly not in Flint there is no help coming from anywhere so we can do this for ourselves and we can begin to communicate with one, one another 
and we can use our phones for everybody I've met who has trouble keeping the water on they still have their their smartphone so let's use that technology let's use the internet that focuses on the world and focus it right here inside Flint and play this game right here together and uh, I think we can succeed in spite of the government quite honestly we don't need permission to get together and learn how to help one another play this game with me today